This is what happens when I do intros in place of Gary, and I try to do his intro and my intro at the same time. Hi, I'm Chris, and this is Binary Jazz, and I am Jazz Sequence on the internet. That's Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet, and that's Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet, and together, collectively, we make Binary Jazz, a podcast about things. Hey, things. <laughs> <laughs> Such a variety of things I realized because I um someone was asking me about the very the variety of topics and I was just like it's really everything. So I don't turn down suggestions for topics. Does that mean you got a suggestion for a topic? It does, yes, mm. for a future episode. Mm. Also, I realized that I don't quite register mentally that I am on a podcast because <laughs> some, someone asked oh have you recorded any podcasts lately and i went what are you talking about <laughs> and <laughs> i was like i just acted as if i was like i have no idea what you're referencing and then i remembered oh and people listen mm. so hi hi faithful listeners <laughs> <laughs> allison is indeed on a podcast as are we all i know who knew and here's proof here Right here. In the, in the now, I'm not. I'm. I'm not being nearly um, said enough about it, and being in the now and recognizing that this Boy, is I where I am. Yeah. So if you're listening to this podcast, the people that are on this podcast are on a podcast. <laughs> Let's get real meta. <laughs> Everything that is happening now is happening now. It's in the now, but it's How happening do we get also. Back to then? But it'll yeah, also be. It It'll also be happening later when you're listening to this, not in the now. Yes. This so is now, a, now. <laughs> in understanding the difficulty of words, right, here's one that bothers me. Space heaters don't actually heat space. They're like for use in your house. Imagine my disappointment. That's because, <laughs> well, <laughs> while, while a space heater... I mean, I think that's called the sun, but while a space heater would be useful, <laughs> I hear space is very cold. Um, the space heater for your home heats a space. Not I get it. It's just space. improper use of the word. False well, advertising. Improper um, use of the word for you, but it does do what it advertises. <laughs> it heats a space. It's just not that space. I think the word space to describe outer space is false advertising because that just means what, what, stuff I like or this. place. What, what would be an alternative word you would rather use instead of outer space? I like something this. new, a different word <laughs> entirely. Word. A word that does not exist because that would describe the thing that it is. The. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with a combination, like a good portmanteau of some sort, but I don't really have much. Can we just call it Beyond? The Beyond. The Beyond. Beyond, beyond Heater. Yeah. <laughs> beyond Heater. Beyond Heater. Wow. That's probably worse false advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's like a heater and a cooler, and then it is a Beyond Heater. It's heat and cools. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I had to go to Home Depot last night because the bedroom I, I built here gets a little chilly. Uh -huh. um, I have not finished running the, uh, the venting in there because I've been in the attic twice and I can't really figure out, I mean, I can figure out how to get through the ceiling, but I can't, there's some logistics I haven't figured out yet on how to mount the- an, an attic as well as a basement or just an attic? Oh God, no, there's no basements in Florida. They'd all flood. Right, okay, yeah. right, right, right. I yeah, I, basements are just like a mystery. If people have basements, I'm like, wow. Like that to me is like a multi-level house. You must be rich if you have a basement. That's, <laughs> that's the Florida man mentality. So the attic over the garage is um, not like a, you know, like what? I mean, it's like the ladder pulls down and it's just rickety. It's going to break on me one day. It's how I'm going to die. I'm going to climb the ladder. It's going to snap. Getting on Christmas decorations. 
fall to my death, crushed by a Christmas tree um, or something. You heard wow. it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Wouldn't that suck if that's how it went down? Like in a year, I'll just be like a BuzzFeed link or something. So Gary's not death on podcasts he's apparently on a year, <laughs> a year before it happens. I love that you immediately were like, oh, and then I'd be a BuzzFeed link. <laughs> Like that's the be, news folks these days. Yeah. That's the evolution of, of this obituary, hypothetically. <laughs> and we we will know him by his path of BuzzFeed links. <laughs> <laughs> we will know him by the trail of BuzzFeed links. <laughs> anyway. I, um, my, back by to the you trail of BuzzFeed listicles. Back to you predicting how, how it'll happen. <laughs> oh, so the attic is not like a a space that I want, would want to use with, with, with great regularity. It's, right. it's pretty crappy. I am kicking around the idea of closing in, like putting two walls in the garage. So I've got like a, a room that's open on one wall. Um, mm -hmm. So I can work out there on occasion. I don't know, we'll see. When you say work out there, you mean work out there, not work out. Oh yeah, clearly. I didn't even realize that there was a second definition there. <laughs> yeah. That's not a thing I... No, I pictured you, like, to run. I was thinking, like, picturing, like, a constructing, like, a home gym sort of situation. Oh, man. When I was in high school, you had to take um, a phys ed class, like, mm -hmm. I guess every other semester or something. I don't remember what it was. I mean, like, look at me, right? So, <laughs> I and somehow ended up in weight training. So, it was me, um, what was his name? This tremendously overweight guy that was the nicest guy to me, but, like, grossly obese. And then the football team. So, like, my weight training partner was, like, 300 pounds. I was, like, a, you know, a buck 15 in, in high school, right? <laughs> Maybe a buck 20. And, like, your grade was bench pressing your own body weight, right? So, like, the oh, first week God. I'm there with, like, the 45-pound bar, like, <laughs> <laughs> and my, my, my poor partner, that's right? That's I mean, 300 pounder. Yeah. He had no, no absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Silly. But unless that's 300 pounds of pure muscle, that ain't happening. It was not muscle. <laughs> it was not muscle. Really? I always try to get to the bench first because, yeah, it got sweaty and gross. And no, I that just that, that helped my interest in, in any kind of working out at weight training class. That was what's the thing. Oh. Well, fun fact, Aaron did weight training in high school too. I don't know for how long, not very long, but I think it was like at least a semester or something. She's talked about it. I just want, I would just want someone that could spot me well enough to save my life when I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do it properly. I, I just want to be able to carry my library books like a boss. <laughs> That's the end goal. Whatever brings me to that goal. I did, I, yeah, I did, I did PE um, and we rotated activities and we, so we rotated into the gym, um, but I never had, like, when I stopped having to take PE as a, as a like class, which I think was after sophomore year, I just stopped taking it. I'm like, I've got better things to do, dude. <laughs> better things. Got other folks. I got other things. Get me in them plays. Yeah. Yeah. We had the option to do, um, in high school, we could be involved in like the arts or the sport or like tech like behind the scenes for plays could count as well. Oh. It's interesting. Um, yeah, that was all that was all under the drama theater umbrella in my high school. Yeah. And actually I think now that I'm thinking about it, because I I did three years of drama and I'm pretty sure that that was the replacement for PE. So I think it was only one year of, of PE that was required. Hmm. That's amazing. Um, I did marching man for all four years, but I, I mean, and I, I marched my little butt off, but I couldn't count that as PE, which sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's, I mean, depending also what instrument you play, that's a lot of physical exertion. Yeah, it is. I yeah, mean, even when it's not a like, you know, often. We did, we did like, we did duck walking in marching band for like the first month of marching band that ain't fun <laughs> that ain't, that's not just like do, 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 standing in place i mean to get us to, like used to doing it for long periods of time and to do it in unison and all sorts of things the coordination <laughs> yeah I, it, and and like also it's painful yeah 
I did like where you were headed with that with the duck walking, where I was like, what's happening? Duck walking? It's like we had duck walking as an extracurricular. <laughs> That's, That's what I was it. thinking too. Duck walking. What is, what is duck walking? What what is duck walking? Yeah, I'm assuming you're not putting a duck on a leash, which no, is what Allison and I are imagining. Yeah, really. Uh, it's when you walk on the heels of your feet only. So oh. you have to do the entire marching, like the entire song, marching on the heels of your feet, and do it in time and and synchronized. Yeah. You end up because using. Because if like... you can do that, then you can basically, like the marching thing is a pinch. <laughs> Duck walking uses like w the weirdest like calf muscle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Muscles that you're like, oh, that's that's a thing that's that exists. <laughs> not a thing I knew I had. <laughs> I would appreciate a good uh, our our duck walking alternative, which would take even greater coordination on the duck's part. Uh, <laughs> I imagine. Attach the duck to your little your little music stand there. Yeah, it's like agricultural. It's kind of a, a little 4-H, a little music. What? Sports. It involves, it involves the whole fan. <laughs> I like that idea. Also, what kind of leash would you even put on a duck? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's a whole, like, is it more of a harness? I think I feel like more of a harness situation because you can't, like, put a leash on a duck. Their necks just seem so tender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so definitely, definitely, sort of hard, definitely sort of a harness scenario, I think. Yeah. But then it has to go over the wing. Over the yeah. wing. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it, it would compress the wings because you don't want your duck flying away while it's being walked. This is also true. <laughs> there are people out here walking ducks. There's there's I mean, it's, it's like when you when you catch they when get you catch shoes, a, right? Pet ducks get shoes to protect the webbing between their feet. Google that. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. I'm pretty sure I didn't just make that up. I might have. It sounds but adorable. I <laughs> they are. Yeah. Maybe I read it on Twitter. Maybe someone I follow on Twitter has a pet duck with cute shoes. God, I hope so. Twitter is so <laughs> someone out there does. <laughs> if you're on Twitter and you have a pet duck with cute shoes, please, please follow me so I can follow you back. Yeah, binary Gary. Yeah. No. Well, or binary yeah, Gary. for the good of the show. But I'll but, retweet it for sure. Oh, my word. Cute shoes, cute socks, basically any sort of waterfowl with footwear, we will accept. <laughs> That's fair. If it was a goose, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't argue. A goose would be fine. Yeah. Well, a flamingo would be trippy, though. Open, like open somebody, call. Like straight socks pulled up. Open call to Twitter as a whole to at Binary Jazz with your <laughs> cute waterfowl shoes photos. Yeah. I'll accept so many of those. That'll be my new, my new computer wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Just like flamingos with like really lengthy so striped socks. <laughs> I, I had no Photoshop. No, yeah. <laughs> we need to make that clear. It needs to be actual photographs, not actual Photoshop. Photos of birds with. This isn't. This isn't a Photoshop challenge. We aren't Gizmodo. <laughs> That's next week. Yeah. No. I was camping with the kids tonight, and these are the socks I intend to wear. They're Christmas socks. They say bottoms up, but something like that. <laughs> what a flamingo needs something, to be. yeah. They need like a good stripe, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to put my socks away. <laughs> good. Uh, mm. Well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, where do we, yeah, I don't know if I can top waterfowl with footwear. It's just. <laughs> Incidentally, our topic today is. <laughs> waterfowl with footwear. Flamingos. No, um, I do love flamingos. Uh, yeah, no, the topic today is uh, a good topic. No, <laughs> she says, stalling. No, um, it's St. Apollonia. Saint Apollonia. Yeah. That's a kind of tuna, right? Apollonia tuna. So, um, <laughs> in the 80s. I love, I love where your brain takes you immediately, where I'm just like, wow. In the 80s, uh, 
man, this is random. 1880s? So, 1980s. In the okay. 80s, uh, when Prince was still Prince, and before he was Prince again, um, he, he produced... Uh, was it, what time out? What, that was when he was reprinted? No. <laughs> he, Prince was Prince, but then he got into a label dispute, and he was the artist formerly known as Prince, but now known as some strange un... un uh, unpronounceable symbol the, the and, then artist, later, yeah, and then later he got the rights to all of his albums back and then he was prince again because that was the whole deal before i thought you said prince p-r-n-t-s not, not prince prince, prince. prince so i thought he was reprinted performer. prince the performer. totally misunderstood if you had made this the the, the artist's icon i would have understood <laughs> oh right if i'll just flash it on the screen <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Yeah, just keep it at hand in case you need it. <laughs> so you're for the for the artist icon. Please, well, I think both of you should do that for some sort of work meeting <laughs> that pops up just all of a sudden. Make a print reference, but hold up like a cardboard cutout of the symbol. Now I need to go print out the symbol. Okay. Um, Anyway, in the 1980s, uh, Prince uh, recorded a series. Prince, artist Prince uh, recorded a couple albums uh in succession uh, around uh, purple rain and uh he worked with some other performers and and during this time uh notably uh featured in the film purple rain and possibly the sequel uh what is it under the rainbow bridge or some crap anyway um it's a weird title but I'll yeah <laughs> some, some crap really kills it um <laughs> so in purple rain his love interest is I don't remember her name, but she was in in the movie and also out of the movie, one of the members of the musical group Apollonia 6. Can so St. Apollonia is that person who is also later then became a fundamentalist Christian and um, then uh, criticized Prince for his ungodliness. Not buying it. Can you spell, spell it, please? <laughs> <laughs> all of this thing, all these things are legit, except for possibly the Saint Apollonia. The last eighty percent yeah. referred to her. The part where she's she was martyred. <laughs> <laughs> um, Apollonia. What do you want me to spell? A A P O L L O N I A. Chris, can you pronounce it for me in Italian? Apollonia. <laughs> oh, uh, in Italian. Oh, in Italiano, Apollonia. <laughs> Um, Sante Apollonia. Mamma di Sante Apollonia. It's a gay bar in New Jersey. <laughs> I, I would like I mean, the root, the root of, of the Italian pronunciation. <laughs> what the hand gestures? Yeah. Yeah. It just has to be. Uh, <laughs> the patron saint. Of parking meters. <laughs> Why parking meters? Or, or like like civic order. Like here is where you leave your vehicle. You will pay <laughs> for the spot to leave your vehicle here. Saint Apollonia. So what the did the feast day of Saint Apollonia is what, February 29th. What did uh, Saint Apollonia do to become sainted? Uh, Saint Apollonia famously um, in Rome. Back in the 1780s, Chris, not the 1980s, um, <laughs> oversaw where all the um, uh, papal support staff would park their carriages. <laughs> so, so at that point, he was just Father Apollonia. Work. No, listen, listen, we're getting there. So Father Apollonia, I mean, his job was there in the courtyard, and he did it with um, such an attitude of service and gratitude for the opportunity to help create order where there previously was not order um, uh, actually led to the implementation of parking lots at Catholic churches around the world. St. Apollonia. Yeah, I don't think you know how St. Apollonia. February 29th. <laughs> no, not really. I probably should, but no, I don't. I feel like at some point I probably did, but that does seem like something you could be sainted for in the Catholic church. No. Order? <laughs> At this point, I mean, yeah. I think, I think that there has to be. Come three, on. There has to be three things that you do, and it's not just like public service. It's like. Time out. Slow down. I want you to go slow on this because I'm about to learn something. 
there's, there, there's three things you have to do. It's not, you have to perform three uh, as miracles, essentially, not and how the how miracles are defined. Did you see the parking situation catchy? before? It was, damn near wasn't a miracle. Well, <laughs> oh, damn near isn't good enough. Um, I guess like, not. Like uh, what is it? Is it St. Patrick who led the snakes out of Ireland? I think so. So like he he. Well, the miracle there is the 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 snakes follow so, him out of Ireland, and then there's no snakes in Ireland, and now he's a. Declare him a snake. I snake oil salesman, but. Well, <laughs> why were there? Well, so that's what he needed the snakes for. Are you oiling his snakes? <laughs> I mean, what is he gonna? He's, he leaves Ireland. He's in Wales now, and he's like, "What am I going to do with all these snakes?" Uh. <laughs> Every three thousand miles, got to oil your snake. <laughs> oh. That's a myth, by the way. The three thousand miles. My car has a little button that I push it and it tells me the health of my yeah. oil. And it's not, it is more than 3,000 miles. That's just, they just want your money. They just, yeah. yeah. I think the 3,000 miles absolutely want your money. But I think part of it comes from like the, the average, like what's a, what's a normal amount to drive, right? Yeah. So some along the way, someone said, well, 250 miles a week, right? I don't know if that's true or not, but that gives you a 25 mile commute five days a week. Or twenty mile commute plus like groceries and that kind of crap, right? That that breaks out twelve thousand miles a year. So, like, yeah. you want to see your no, car it's all it's all. Like, I get it, but yeah. yeah, yeah. The blue car, I call it the blue car. My old Kia, one hundred and forty thousand miles or something on it. I mean, it get, right now it gets driven hmm, once a week. So it's been six months since then an oil change, and it hasn't gone three thousand miles. It's a granny car. It kind of, yeah, yeah. I really need like a, I'm proud of my honor grandchild or something like that, you know. <laughs> I do need to make like an old lady mobile. Foldable cart in the back. Yeah, I'm not knocking granny cars because that's what we bought and we're super happy with our granny car. At 30,000 miles, it was like four years old. Thanks. Yeah. I have uh, extolled the virtues of minivans here before, but I'm still team minivan. <laughs> I wish I was taking the minivan. I'm taking the kids camping tonight. I wish I was taking the mini minivan. It would be easier. But the blue car is a better car to take camping. Because I don't really care if we get in with muddy shoes or, you know. Mm -hmm. It smells like camping gear for a few weeks. I mean, who's oh, going to know? I won't, but one that time. That sound in the background is the cat, and that's why you're not responding. I'm like, why is there a child crying? Gary's just not doing anything. Is it the cat? It was. It is the cat. It better be. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I just, wow, it is a cat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's that it's that particular frequency that's like, oh my god, it's anxiety, a... and and it is just the cat who has somehow mastered that particular frequency. I feel like I know this cat at this point. <laughs> I should bring Max out. He was named Max when we, I don't know, we adopted. I there was no adoption process. It was like, we want that one. Okay. I mean, it was like there was like background checks. Adoption seems like such a formal word for what we did. <laughs> we got a cat that was like going to be put down. You know, picked mm. up the cat and walked out of the building. <laughs> I think we had to pay for it, but I don't think it was a lot. And now this this I mean this damn thing's been here sixteen years. We've had this cat. Yeah. We had the cat shortly after we got married. Yeah. yeah. Our cat, our oldest cat, has, has been with us for about 16, 17 years, I think. Good. These are good cat lengths, guys. Yeah. Is... Well, I mean, this is the cat that out, has, has not only outlived our other cats, but also was the one that we didn't think would outlive any of our cats because when we first got her, she was the one that ate lots and lots of fabric. And we're like, she's totally going to tear up her insides. Yeah. And and she's gonna die with like a you know tied up intestines because of all the crap sheets. Uh, like who who among us? Well, yeah. But 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 apparently it was just cleaning her intestines. It's the recipe maybe, for maybe they, maybe they needed to be cleaned. Yeah. As Gary unwinds some yarn. <laughs> Long life. Like when, when yarn. dogs when dogs eat grass or whatever, and it's supposed to be like they're. No, that just makes them. Yeah, I don't know that blankets are the same as grass, but yeah, I no. see where you're going with that. 
<laughs> well, no, it's like a self, like they think they're helping themselves somehow and it actually panned out for your cat. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it was like uh, eating disorder. It's more, it's more like, it's, it's, it, I think literally like we did, we did do research and, and it's the cat equivalent of shirt biting. Oh, well, that's interesting. You're a nervous cat. Yeah. Huh. Mm. So it's, it's no longer biting, no. eating blankets? Mm. Not for oh, a long good. time. That means that you've we, um, given we, that cat a environment where it feels healthy. We, well, we discovered, well, we, I, I, we discovered that if we leave food out, like just leave it out instead of like having specific prescribed meal times, um, then it didn't happen anymore. Because I guess when she felt that urge to, to chew blankets, she just went to eat a little bit or something. And so she became overweight, but then not eating blankets. And since then, she's actually like- Oh, I'm so full. I couldn't have another bite. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> since then, she, she hasn't been overeating as much, but she also still doesn't eat blankets. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's a long time now, but- um, she's still a little bit chubby, but not as much as she used to be. I like the, oh, I couldn't possibly have another fit blanket. Maybe a baby blanket. Maybe like a little tiny napkin. <laughs> Just a nibble. Hmm. I feel like St. Apollonia is probably, is probably like a uh, bulk food dis distribution company. <laughs> For like Italian, like the, like the cookie cutter Italian restaurants, right? <laughs> like, where do you order your red pepper packs from? St. Anap Apollonia. Maybe I'm not even pronouncing it correctly. Maybe it's like, I don't know how else you'd pronounce it. I don't it. know how, I don't, I, well, in Purple Rain, when they're describing Apollonia 6, that's how they pronounce it. That's also the name of a city. Something. I was going to say star system, but okay. <laughs> All those things. A city of stars, got it. A <laughs> city of stars. A space heater. <laughs> the Apollonia space heater. Yeah, I'm oh. gonna go with. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick with my my Prince uh, Apollonia definition. It's Same definitely, time. definitely that that chick who was in Apollonia Six, and the love interest. I'm not gonna stick with any of my definitions because I'm clueless on this one. <laughs> clueless how saints work. So we cover all three ways you can be a saint. Uh, it, you, have snakes. To, you have to do, you have to do three things, and it doesn't matter yeah. what those things are. Um, and then usually when you become a patron saint, you become a patron saint of like one or multiple of those things. Like if you had a particular interest or parking whatever. meters. Yeah. Yeah. So, so to be a patron saint of parking meters, you would have to perform three miracles relating to parking meters. Hmm. So there is a patron saint of like computers, right? I don't know. Maybe, but if so, it would probably like, that. <laughs> of computers there's a patron saint of everything yeah i mean you can modernize it's a, it's a door of seville is the patron saint of the internet is yeah door? Well, you, uh, you is a door of seville yeah. which so, was also like, originally great. it was not the patron saint. originally before there was the internet she was not the patron saint of the internet yeah no no 1997 john paul ii declared isidore seville the saint, patron saint of the internet St. Isidore died in the year 636. What did she do? Before. She has a beard in this picture. Great. I'm in. <laughs> that might amend my pronouns. Yeah. <laughs> I, Does she okay, identify as a she? <laughs> I, have no, I have no qualms with, with, with a woman who has a beard. I just... Well, she would have to identify... Well, wait. So... Patron, yes. like, is masculine. Like Patronus, right? like, you know, you're... So, who are, who are some saints? Are they... I'm confused. Patron saint, I don't believe, is a, is a gender-specific... Yeah, okay. Word. Well, in this article, Isidore Seville identifies as a man. Um, okay. Sir. And wrote a... Uh, I was going to be six thirty six. I was going to be a bit surprised if it was a woman, to be honest. <laughs> Just as a... Isidore did try to record everything ever known in an encyclopedia that was ultimately published after his death. I feel like maybe this was a miss. Isidore Seville should not have been patron saint of the internet. Isidore Seville probably should have been patron saint of Facebook. <laughs> Facebook does not need a patron saint. Facebook needs something. 
Facebook I don't know has, already, has been listening to the little devil on their shoulder for far too long. So much so that the that the the angel on the shoulder um, just put up a sign said that said furloughed by government shutdown and walked away. Yeah. yeah, you think 28 days is bad. Jeez, try working at Facebook with a conscience. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was so uh, cool. I'm sure if, if we have someone that works at Facebook, I'm sure you're a wonderful person and have morals, even if the CEO doesn't. Boy, Facebook have... and the country are pretty parallel at this point, aren't they? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. We're uh, so, so uh, it's about the time to define safe uh, Apollonia. <laughs> Okay, so Saint Apollonia, um, she she is the patron saint of dentists and toothaches. Um, oh. Unfortunately, she um, died at the hands of an unruly mob who were like not fans of Christians, um, and they did some pretty horrible things to her teeth, which is why she is the patron saint of dentists. Oh no. <laughs> Golly. That's like this is that's like that's like being drawn and quartered and being the patron saint of rope. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, but um, a lot of it's and year wise, um, second century is where we're where we're at with this, so it's not recent. Um, but she has a lot of uh, uh, artwork of her holding tongs, sometimes with teeth in them. Oh God! Uh, so there's a lot of like really interesting artwork. Um, with her. This is the worst way to be sainted ever. Yeah, it's not great. Um, I mean, really actually, I can't say that. There's probably far worse ways to being sainted. In fact, we should probably do a research project to figure out how everyone else was sainted and, and have a top 20 list oh, of yeah. most gruesome ways of being sainted. There's got to be, yeah, there's got to be better. Be uh, others. There's definitely got to be others. Maybe St. Patrick didn't will, actually so. lead the snakes out of, out of Ireland. He was just eaten by all the snakes in Ireland. Exactly, exactly. But they're all tiny, so it was like death by a thousand yes. yeah. papal cuts or something. Um, but yeah, anyway. So, dad so, jokes. Smile wide, and next time you go to the dentist, you can... Pray to St. Apollonia. Give a, a little shout out to St. Apollonia, who is watching out for you. I um, had... Obviously, she didn't watch out for herself when they pulled out her teeth. I don't know. No, no. Yeah. They, yeah, uh, they did a lot I, um, of <laughs> In my file, it had a note that I was a biter. <laughs> um, Your dental yeah. file? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, because the orthodontist was in there, and he was doing hurt, so I bit him. Oh. I mean, it was intentional. It was not like an accidental biting thing. They also had a note that I um, uh, had a, a strong gag reflex, which was true. Um, I also had extra teeth, so... How many extra teeth? Two. Okay. One here and one here. Yeah. Um, but the first ones that came in were like weak and inferior. So they wanted to pull these ones down. So they did like a little surgery and put brackets on those ones, oh. with the braces to crank them down. But this one, instead of cranking down, pulled the rest of the teeth up oh. because it was anchored to the bone. So they did another surgery to try and get it removed from the bone. And when they did, they snapped the bone. Oh. So I have a, I, I get a bone graft back in the, what year was that? I feel like you back should have the, already been praying to St. Apollonia at this point. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is, this, I say this because I think, like, I think it that be was the beginning dirty. of the end of my, I think dentists are scammers. I, uh, I had my, well, they are. last year. I mean, I did go to the dentist, but I do not, I hate the dentist. I, I feel like we should, we should probably put a content warning on this for anybody who has like weird teeth things i'm just <laughs> especially especially oh, now it's like it's not even about the the cleaning or whatever it's about all the shit they're gonna put on your teeth like oh, oh and we're gonna put this like seal on all of your teeth and they're gonna fluoride the crap out of your mouth and, and we're gonna and car the... wash with your mouth yeah it's more about like the whitening and like almost like spa like aesthetic that they're yeah. trying to, to attain the health yep i uh and it's not it's not performed by the dentist. It's performed by dental hygienists who don't, don't need to actually go to you know school for dentistry. It's, yeah. But shout out to all those dental hygienists that listen to the podcast. Hi, dental hygienists. We believe in you. It's, Quit being assholes. It's the nature of, of most industries, though. Individually, like people are good. As a whole, like we're pretty much assholes. All of us, like communally. I 
I don't know. Like, is, is I, that I appreciate you it. want to end the podcast on? We're all ass. Oh, no, we have three minutes, and I am just launching into it. You know what I'm going to add? It's like the Hindenburg. Um, I like the, the, the problem is you have people that are dental hygienists and people that are dentists that are interested in, in first, you know, keeping people's mouths functional, but secondly, the cosmetic value and that kind of stuff that are really interested in their patients. And, and the entire industry is set up now that you can't succeed as, or it's becoming harder to succeed as an independent dentist. You have to become yeah. part of one of these dental mills that are just grinding people to make sales. And it's, you know, it's just, it's bullshit what it is. God, I am so negative today. I hope I didn't bring you all down. Go out and put money in someone's parking meter on half the same Apollonia or something. Or teeth, I guess, if you want. You put teeth in the parking meter, too. You have extras. Do you have your baby teeth? I don't have my baby There's a question. No. no I, I mean, like, do you... I have... Oh, no, I don't have those either. Your parents, do your parents keep your, your baby teeth? Just uh, across the board, the, the I don't... I don't... I think for a while, but I don't think they do anymore. Yeah. I think I kept them for a while. I think it was awesome. We, we were keeping them for our kids, and then threw some away and then decided oh wait but stem cells and then started keeping them again oh ah, that's interesting You're just keeping them in the freezer to preserve the stem cells or how do you no. what do you in a thing i don't know Nothing, a vial yeah <laughs> and you have them like identified or just like all that like this is probably yeah that may have been yours yeah, this I'm, is the jar of teeth is i think we, like i think we have separate i think we have you separate. drill into like the hmm? The mosquito inside and extract DNA. I don't understand how you get stem cells out of a tooth. After a <laughs> give it to it. I don't know. Give it to a doctor and they'll do it. They have it in a while. <laughs> if in if in the future or something, stick is good, I don't know. <laughs> walking stick encased in amber. It's <laughs> like, it's like walks, you know, you carry your. your the house. It's like you carry your extra heart in a jar in the freezer or something in case you need a heart transplant. I mean, everyone does it, right? That's just how it's done. It's preservation. Self-preservation. My, 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 question, former question, my, former like my social norms so often. <laughs> my former roommate, or one of my roommates, uh, had, a, had one of her pet rats in the freezer uh, for like months and months and months because her rat died and she wanted to like give it a funeral but didn't and it was still dead and she needed to do something with it. So it was just living in the freezer for- We all mourn in different ways. <laughs> And then there was a rat sickle, and we often had conversations about the rat sickle, and like you really need to do something about the rat sickle in the freezer. Like, was it labeled? No, I don't think you need to label. It was the rat in the freezer. It didn't need a label. It was in a bag or something, or yes. it was just like laying there. It was in a it was in a ziploc. Next to the lasagna today. <laughs> Next to the ice cube trays, I think, in the ice cream. Yeah, underneath the Apollonia shelf. <laughs> <laughs> What a weird episode. <laughs> Thank you for accommodating my schedule. I appreciate you being so flexible and weird. <laughs> we were Apollonia-like in nature. No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think that I missed something in the context of that. No, I was trying to maybe verb it, but it didn't work out. apollonia think. Ap Apollonia. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.